Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 102 of Peter Worrell Hockey Journey, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before you get asked if you want to go, drop the gloves, start an on-ice dance, and begin this discussion, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the largest database of off-ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, to gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person, off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. My next guest, former NHLer Peter Worrell, has a big presence when he enters a room. With a height of 6 feet 7 inches and weighing 230 pounds of lean muscle mass, he probably wasn't very fun to play against. One of the most feared heavyweight fighters in the NHL back in the day, and I was fortunate to be able to play with Big Pete when we were down in South Florida playing for the Florida Panthers. Mr. Worrell is a Caribbean Canadian who moved from Barbados to Montreal when he was three years old. His hockey journey was more challenging than most, being a black man playing in a mostly white sport. That's only part of the story, as like all hockey players, there's ups and downs each and every season. Peter had his share of difficulties along the way, one in particular being, what would his eventual role be on the team, point producer or NHL enforcer? It's been over a decade since I've seen or talked to this former roommate on the road of mine. I can't wait to reconnect, hear his hockey journey, and how he eventually played in 391 NHL games, scoring 19 goals and amassing 1,554 penalty minutes over a seven-year NHL career. That's a lot of scrappy doing. (laughs) We'll start at the beginning and work our way through his life ending with what he's doing today and who's benefiting from his guidance and experiences. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Peter Worrell to the show. Pete, welcome to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Peter, thanks for having me. It's, it's, uh, it's been a long time. I'm looking forward to talking to you. I'm really excited about it. Uh, you know, I, I'm not an active uh, Facebooker. But uh, I like watching the the little cat and dog videos. <laughs> but every once in a while, you know, you'll fly by on uh, some post, and I'll like, what is, what the heck is he doing? So uh, I finally finally just uh, said, let's let's kind of see if I can get a hold of him, and uh, here we are. So thanks for being here, Pete. Oh no, I'm glad I'm glad to be here. Um, very much like you, like I'm not a big uh, social media person overall, but. Um, when you, when you reach out to me, I was, I was, I was super excited. So. Fantastic. Well, how I uh, start all the shows where mm-hmm. I'm interviewing an individual, uh, is I'd like you to rewind the tape and let's take a moment, uh, look in the rear view mirror and go back to the beginning. Uh, where'd you grow up? What was your childhood like? Your parents, siblings, friends, your introduction to hockey and other sports. Basically, Tell all the Hockey Journey podcast listeners, in a nutshell, what the heck it was like growing up, Peter Worrell. Um, it was it was very pleasant. Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, outside of Montreal in a, in a, in a town called Pierrefonds, uh, the west town of Montreal. But where, um, aren't you aren't you from the Caribbean? I am originally from the Caribbean. Yes, I, I was born in Barbados. I moved to Montreal when I was three. Okay, you should um, include that stuff. Okay, that's the stuff my listeners like to know. Uh, can I ask you one? Can I ask you one quick yeah, question? Absolutely. What's the proper uh, pronunciation of? Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? <laughs> that's a, that's a quite the battle. Depends on where you're from. Oh, um, really? Really? Yeah, absolutely. No, it depends where you're from. I mean, like, uh, 
Uh, my parents would say they're from the Caribbean. Uh, okay. But yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, different different parts of the world will say Caribbean. It's, you know, it's all. all it's, I know it's, is really anybody takes it as an insulting, and it's just, you know, how people say things. All I know is that in some Bob Marley song, he says that Cari- Caribbean, Caribbean. So but I, I go, I go that way. Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, man. I, yeah. Again, a lot of it is, is, is uh, you know, especially with Bob, that was a lot of, you know, poetic license with stuff. Right. So he was trying to make, he was trying to make words fit into the, into the rhythm, into the beat. Right. So yeah. Um, different words got, 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 um, elongated or or, or, or or change a little bit um and even like when you when you listen to you know the the, the current you know dance all reggae i mean it's they all take they all take poetic license yeah i know you as a music lover can understand that oh absolutely yeah i'm a huge <laughs> bob marley fan and my favorite song if i had to pick one is uh natural mystic by him just love that great song, song. okay great so song. You, you spent some time there. Don't remember anything, but now you're in Montreal. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you for oh, the no clarification. Go, no go on. Um, yeah, no. So um, we moved to uh, moved to Montreal. Us three. Um, my parents had been in uh, had been in Montreal uh, or in Canada earlier. Um, my parents were older, so um, they had moved. They had lived in Hamilton at one point, um, and they kind of my dad kind of fell in love with hockey. Uh, he worked for the Royal Bank of Canada. Went back for for a while uh, with me and my brother, and then when we came back, um, you know, Dad was still enamored with hockey. Uh, put my older brother in it. Uh, he's seven years older than me, um, and you know, I just used to go to the rink with him. Uh, my brother, I had my cousin uh, Dwayne Douglas, uh, who you know was a, a big time player in our area. Um, so I used to just kind of watch them. We play in the basement, uh, the two of them against uh, me and my other cousin, Wayne. And they just torture us and beat the crap out of us back then. Um, yeah. But it kind of, you know, instilled that drive and that love of the game. And, um, you know, growing up in Montreal, like, you know, the neighborhood, the neighborhood street hockey games and all that stuff that we got into. Um, and, you know, and I think when I turned five, uh, was the first time that uh, I got my first pair of skates. Uh, got into like the, you know the, the different little youth leagues, um, and you know as a athletic kid, a taller kid, I, I kind of took to it per- fairly well. Um, I think by six, I was already playing on on I guess the top travel teams in in uh, Montreal. Um, I was fairly lucky. The group that I started with. Um, we had a bunch of guys that ended up having really good careers. Um, you know, um, I, I played with this guy, Jason Doig, who, who, who ended up, you know, uh, being a second round pick, played in the NHL for, for quite a bit. Um, PJ and, and PJ and Dean Stock, uh, were, were kids that I grew up playing with all the whole time. Uh, Vinny LeCave, uh, obviously ended up being the best of us. Um, but we had, we had a really good group of kids and, and there was a bunch of guys that ended up playing major junior, played minor league sure. pros, uh, for a long time. So, uh, you know, we were around, uh, you know, a bunch of guys a little older than us that ended up having good careers. Jimmy Montgomery, uh, is one that stands out. Um, so it was, it was a good, small little insulated community. And, um, you know, we all competed with each other. We all, uh, uh, had fun with each other. We all grew up with each other. We all had our ups and downs uh, throughout our career. Uh, you know, hockey was a lot different back then. So I think I, every one of us in youth hockey got cut from a, from the team at one point. Um, and you just kind of stuck around. And you kept trying to fight and try to work your way through the through the battle and uh, get yourself back onto the top team, right? So um, what was your – what was your uh, – did you spend a lot of time – uh, when you first started playing, or I mean, even your youth, but spent a lot of time on uh, outdoor ponds, you know, uh, well, playing the, the game. Yeah, I don't know, all the time. Um, there was probably three different, uh, not necessarily ponds, but like in the winter months, like they they, they turned every basketball court, every ho- uh, soccer field into an outdoor rink. So yeah, uh, there was probably about three within walking distance. Uh, I had a couple guys who, you know, would, would, would set some up in their backyards as well. Um, yeah. But, like, it was just the neighborhood kids would get together and, and 
Uh, you know, when you're younger, you were just trying to get into the game <laughs> with the big boys. Yeah. Um, and then once you got older, like it was, uh, it was a friendly competition, but we all wanted to be the best. Right? We all wanted to show we were better than the other guys. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was, uh, I think it's where some of us learned how to be cutthroat in certain ways. Um, yeah. but same token also be very supportive of everybody else. Right. It was, like I said, it was always a friendly competition. Um, and, uh, it, there were fun games, like, and we would do it, you know, school would end at two 30. Uh, you know, you come home for about a half hour, you know, do your homework. And then you were out till eight o'clock every night, right. Until you, until mom or dad, you know, dragged you by your ear <laughs> to back to the house. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a two part follow-up question on that is, uh, were you, were you, cause you're, you topped out at six feet, seven inches tall. Mm -hmm. Uh, it says here in hockey DB, you were 230 pounds. Um, were you big early? And then in, when you didn't have the outdoor hockey and back then there wasn't all this year round triple a when hockey was over, it was basically over. Mm -hmm. Uh, what did you do in the off season to, uh, to get better? Not just, I mean, I'm assuming that you're lifting weights and stuff, but I'm talking about skills. I mean, uh, power skating coach, uh, stick skills uh, coach. Did you have any of that? Did you do any shooting at home? Um, I do shooting at home. I would do stick handling like at home. I would do, um, you know, again, we play a lot of street hockey, but there wasn't any of the uh, the things that the kids are doing today, to be honest here. Like we weren't taking private lessons. Uh, we didn't have uh, individual coaches. We do a summer camp for like a week or two during the, during the summer. Um, but that was kind of it for hockey. Uh, once this, once the season was over, we put the skates away and we did other things. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I, we were athletes back then. So what other yeah, sports did you play? I, I, I played pretty much everything but baseball. Um I was a really good soccer player. Uh, I was, you know, I was a decent basketball player. Nothing, nothing to write home about. Um, I was, I was a swimmer. I played water polo. I was really good at water polo, actually. Um, yeah, I played tennis. Um, like there wasn't a sport that we, I, me and my brother or my cousins didn't, or my friends didn't get into. Uh, again, other than baseball, um, I think that I, I tried to play football for a little bit. Um, I, I wanted to be a safety because, you know, I like hitting people. Uh, they want to put me on the old line. I was like, yeah, hey, I'm not playing football. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, we, again, I, I played, there wasn't a sport that, that I didn't play growing up. Um, and in, in, in the sense of my height, yeah, I was, I was always a big kid. I never, I've, I've never had the growth spurt. I was always the kid that was, uh, taller than everybody. Uh, yeah. I was the one that, uh, you know, the parents would ask for their birth certificate <laughs> yeah, and to see if uh, I was really the 10 year old when actually I was the eight year old. Um, you know, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was fortunate in that way. Um, so here's what I, here's what I find interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt you again. I'm going to do this all day long. Uh, no problem. Cause I'm I, long I like to so do it a little bit. You it. So you, you're a lot of players that I coached over a 17 year career. I mean, the the beginning i was at you know the youngest levels mm -hmm. uh for 12 years i think uh eight years um but when you know a lot of the big kids when they get big early they don't have a strong work ethic and when the little kids you know grow into their bodies they catch that big kid and pass him by um how did you gain such a work ethic to, to be a bigger kid, but also wanted to be one of the hardest working kids on the, whatever sport you were playing. Well, I mean, Hey, I, 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 I agree with your sentiment. So when I was really young, I was the kid that always, I led the province in scoring every year. I was, a, I was a top goal scorer, but I was lazy as all get out. Are you really? <laughs> and uh, it took me, years to, to wake up to that fact right so I, I just relied on just being bigger and stronger than everybody yeah um my year before i went to hull or gatineau um i got cut from my triple a team 
I was the last cut player cut. I led I led them in I led them in scoring actually in preseason. I, I, everybody thought I was going to make the team, um, but they cut me. And uh, you know I was mad. I was angry. And um, I knew I, I was better than the guys that played ahead of me. And one thing I've always been is spiteful in that way, right? So um, part of me, like my mindset was like, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Um, so I just went back to the drawing board and I went to work. Um, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, I was lucky the first day I walked into the gym for the first time and, and I met up with uh, – um, uh, Ryan Ryan Hughes uh, and Kent Hughes, uh, the GM with Montreal, and um, uh, another guy that was playing uh, college hockey at the time, uh, Brad Lazell, uh, who kind of kind of took me under the wing and, and just kind of showed me the ropes in the, in, the, in the gym. I got a little stronger there. Um, awesome. Met with a uh, a scout, a uh, junior scout that helped me get the draft to the hall, and um, you know he just kind of drew it in my head, like, you know, like nobody's ever been cut for being the hardest worker, you know? So, um, I just became my mindset. You know, I went to my first camp and, you know, in Hall, I was never expecting to make the team. Um, I was, I would think I was like the first draft pick in like the, in the junior A league, uh, underneath it. So I was expecting to go there. Um, uh, but I remember the, the, the scout, uh, his name was Frank Deegan. He just told me like, just, be the hardest back checker and see what happens. So I, I, yeah. Yeah, I went in that camp, you know, I, I, you know, I still had a lot of work to do. I was still very raw, but I, I put my head down and just back checked and back checked and back checked and cuts would start being made. And my name was never called and was never called and never called. Um, and then up until like the day before the season started, like I was expecting to get sent home and, they brought me my contract and, and uh, you know, my journey kind of, kind of began. So before we get to that, and that's going to be fairly quick, your, your junior career plan for the Hull Olympique, is that how you say it? That is correct. Oh man, I still got it. <laughs> 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 but uh, what, at what age did you kind of say, I want to, I want to go after this. I want to, I want to be a hockey player. Honestly, I, I, it was probably when I got cut from that team at 15. That was when I was like, no, this is what I want to do. Um, I was still playing other sports. Uh, I was still playing soccer at the time. I was, I was actually, you know, still playing water polo at the time, um, which looking back were, were, were great things to do. Um, it, 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 learning body control and, you know, the strength and just, you know, how to visualize the game a little bit different. I, I, I have great uh, respect for those sports by helping me there. there. But uh, getting cut from that team and and, and going back and, uh, you know, playing on the double-A team that year, playing on uh, captain of my high school team that year, just had a lot of fun and just was like, you know, this is what I want to do. You know, and I don't know how what, what path it was going to be. Um, you know, I, I was actually thought it was going to be a college college route. Um, but, uh, yeah, around that 15, 16 year old is when I was like, you know what, everything else is, is secondary. Um, uh, I want to put everything I have into this right now and, um, see where it goes. Like, again, it wasn't, it wasn't even in a sense of like expecting to get to the highest league or anything of that nature. Uh, the NHL was such a, you know, far in the distance. It was, it was just really about, I, I, I want to be, I want to be the best player I can be. I want to, I, I want to be, I want to show him better than this guy and that guy, this, this guy. And what do I have to do to do that? You know, and, and uh, in that process, you know, things just kind of happened and, and, and worked out. And, um, you know, so a lot of it was through hard work. A lot of it, you know, was through luck, being in the right place at the right time being with the right people at the right time um, that helped me, uh, you know, achieve the ultimate goal. So, uh, well, that's amazing. Um, and you just have such a mindset. I mean, I just, it's, it's, we all, it's, it's interesting, Pete, because 
every interview that I, and I've, I've said this almost every time that I interview a former player teammate that I have is that everyone's jer- journey is the same, but it's all different. You know, it's completely different too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you, and there's always a, uh, there's always someone that gives, gives us a chance or says something to us uh, that kind of helps us get over the hump or, you have a, a kind of a defining moment where all of a sudden a fork in the road comes and you, you chose to say, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. There's a lot more of that. Uh, I can't do it on my own. I'm going to get so, in front of some other people that are going to help guide me. So started, you know, how did, what happened? How'd you get uh, drafted? You uh, start your career with the whole Olympic. And I think that is this, is this a real, is this a real time for you to kind of, where it maybe was a struggle to find out what your role in hockey is going to be. Because I look at your third year there, you put up 63 points in 62 games, but also racked up 495 penalty minutes. I mean, uh, was that a struggle for you trying to figure out how, and how, you know, when did you start fighting? Uh, so again, growing up, I was a goal scorer. Right? So you know, I had good hands in front of the net. I was bigger and stronger than everybody. So, um, you know, I followed the old Don Cherry, you know, dictum of just going on the net, and that's where you score goals, right? Um, my overall game needed still a lot of improvement, right? I, I, my skating wasn't up to par. I uh, had, had to work on that. Um, and, you know, junior allowed me to, you know, to do that, right? So when I got to junior, that was my first – those were my first fights. Like, I never fought in, in youth hockey. I never – you know, we'd play around on the pond, uh, you know, with guys like that. But, you know, we weren't throwing punches. We weren't, you know, trying to hurt anybody. Um, you know, my first junior game, uh, we were playing Victoriaville. And uh, I had a couple of buddies on that team. And um, I remember first exhibition game, We, you know, I scored two goals in the power play and didn't know any better. I, I talked a lot of junk, like, as you know, <laughs> I still did. <laughs> Later on, but I, you know, I talk a lot of smack, and uh, I think uh, third period, a guy grabbed me and asked me to go, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, whatever. Let's let's, I can do this." And he promptly beat the brakes off me, you know, like <laughs> he, he at one point, I, I want to say he knocked me out and then woke me up with another punch, right? So <laughs> it, was, it was not uh, very good, um, and it and it, uh, you know. I was, you know, 16, 17 years old. I was scared. Um, and it took me a while to, you know, to, to, to gain my footing. Um, but we had, a, we had a, a lot of really good guys uh, on that team uh, that were supportive. Uh, a lot of good guys that uh, helped with the role um, and, and, and helped me try to find who I was. Um, but I also was fortunate enough to, um, you know, uh, with the coaches and, and the GM they had, uh, Charlie Henry, our GM believed in me, you know, and, uh, he just believed in me and just in, as a, as a player, like he, he knew that I could be, I had a, the character that could help that program out some way, somehow. Yeah. Um, and my assistant coach that year was Claude Julian, you know, and, and, uh, wow. Claude, Claude took all of us young guys. Cause we had, a, we had 13 rookies on that team. Um, but he took a, a bunch of us under his wing and just kind of, you know, helped us with tips here and there. I mean, uh, like I said, you can never really teach a person to fight until they actually get into them. Uh, but Claude would always help us with, with different details of it and, and just built our confidence in that way and then built us as hockey players. So there was like myself, there was uh, Gory Dwyer played, Colin White that played for Jersey for a long time. Um, Sean Farmer, a couple other guys that, that uh, you know, had some careers. And, you know, we just, every day we worked on on skating. We worked on on, our, on, on getting quick releases off, on on passing, on, on different aspects of the game, positioning. And, you know, then we'd finish it off with, you know, we'd have little tussles and just try to work on some techniques. So, um, you know, by the end of my first year, um, you know, I was playing five minutes a game. Um, but we got in the, by the playoffs. And all of a sudden, my ice time was raised um, and, you know, started getting a little bit of confidence. 
Uh, we ended up winning the Quebec League that year, so we went to the Memorial Hill Cup. Um, and you know, we we shouldn't have gone. <laughs> we sh- we should have just accepted the, uh, the the winning the Quebec League and just you know went on vacation because we didn't we didn't play very well there. Yeah. But but uh, you know, I had, I had a tussle there against you know a, a, a guy that was you know one of the tougher guys in the dub, and uh, I think that's kind of what opened my the open eyes for me. Uh, about me to some NHL teams and uh, Florida drafted me. And uh, I think that's kind of where my confidence kind of got built up. And uh, I came back the next year and um, after having a disastrous camp, uh, I went back to Hull and uh, they moved me up to the first line. I was playing with uh, two really, really skilled forwards and, and we clicked, you know, and, and uh, uh, we all put up a, some really good numbers um, they did it more offensively. I did it more all round, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we had a lot of team success. We, I think we set the record for, for most wins in, in the, in the CHL, uh, in a row at that time. Um, and then the next year we, we, we won the Memorial Cup. So, um, those junior years were, were fantastic, um, in terms of my development, um, but it was also just a really good time in my life. Like it was uh, a lot of fun around a lot of really good people in in a, in a, in a really good organization. And that, and again, that's part of you know what I always say is like, yeah, I worked really hard, but I was lucky in a lot of steps. If, if I didn't go, if I didn't go to the places I went to, or be around the people that I was with, who knows what could happen? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's. It's it shows, you know, that you you needed some time to develop and to find yourself, and that's what an organization's uh, or organization's uh, strength should be is patience, uh, and then to to hope that you get three guys or a defensive pair that just have the mojo, where, yeah. like you said, they just click. Uh, so I I don't know if I've uh, if I've interviewed anyone who's won the Memorial Cup. And uh, being that I'm in Minnesota, just kind of, can you quickly give us uh, a two, three minute overview of, you know, what it takes to get to the more Memorial Cup and how hard it is to win that, uh, that prize trophy? Because that's, that's similar to, to the Stanley Cup, isn't it? As far as you, you know, in, the, the, in some the ways, I, it? I'd say in some ways it's, it's a little harder uh, in some ways. So like, let's, you know, let's keep that in perspective. Um, no, I mean, first of all, I mean, you start off the fact that, you know, you play in the Quebec League. Um, you know, that's an 18-team league. Uh, How many games are for a full year? Uh, we played 72 back then. Then exhibition? Uh, exhibition, we played eight. Um, so at 80 there at 15, 16 years old, right? How old are yeah, you? Correct. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then the twenty playoff games, and you're probably in your own in your own league. Um, so you got to win your you have to win the Quebec League, yeah. And then then you go to the Memorial Cup, and you're playing the champions of the Ontario League, who have a very similar setup, and the Western, League, um, who have a very similar setup. Um, you know, the Quebec League was wasn't as tough as the as the as the Western League. It was harder than the the Ontario League. Uh, in terms of travel, right? So, um, you know, we we played in Hall. It's it's right outside of Ottawa. We had t- we had games against teams uh, in the Maritimes, the Halifaxes, and the Monktons of the world, which was a twenty four hour bus ride. Um, wow. Our that last year, our our final series of the Quebec League was against Chicoutimi, uh, which was a a ten hour bus ride from Hall. And and back then we did one on ones, so it was game one in Hall, game two in, in the next night. In oh. <laughs> so it was oh, it was uh, it was tough that way. And then and then you add the fact that you know the, the 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 science of it, the technology of it, the ideas behind stuff was just a lot different, right? Coaching was a lot different. Um, you know, I remember having a game in, in Halifax that we lost, and have like a twenty four hour bus ride where. You know, we're not, you know, there's no cell phones <laughs> back then, yeah. but like no movie watching, no talking. <laughs> we're not making a stop for, for food or anything. Like we're just driving back, uh, which, 
think that would never happen today, right? So no, no. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, it was it's a it's a grind. It's tough. Um, so again, like you have 18 teams in the in the Quebec League at the time. There was the, about 20 teams in the Ontario League, 20 teams in the in the Western League. So you're you're competing, you know, against um, do my math, like almost 60 teams. Um, and realistically, you have three or four years to win at, at, at best. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a very difficult trophy to win. Um, but I, I, again, it's, it's still, I, I can't say the, a playoff series in, in, in junior was as difficult as a playoff series in the NHL. Uh, not that I had a huge amount of <laughs> played in Florida after all, but, um, the intensity of, a, of an NHL class when you're playing against grown men who are trying to feed their kids, uh, it, it's just a, it's just at a different level. Yeah. But I would say the the, the travel, you know, that – Oh, the travel sucked. That, that, that sucks, yeah. The travel uh, sucks. That beats I, I, I think it's better now because, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, you have the sleeper buses now, uh, which are, makes it a little bit more comfortable. All the buses have – have Wi-Fi and all that stuff now. Um, back then, we were, you know, we're in the regular coach buses, right? So, like, you had, you had, a, you had a Jerry rig something to make it comfortable. So, like, I used to bring uh, a mattress <laughs> and just put it right there on the floor and just, like, yeah, this is – the aisle is mine. Oh, yeah. If anybody steps on me, we're, we're going we're gonna to have issues, right? So – it was uh, you'd have like three guys across the line, and you have guys who would grab a, you know, uh, the older guys would be able to grab like a whole row, and they'd lie across the rock, across the seats, um, and then you know the younger guys had it tough where they were probably uh, bunking up with each other, so they got two to a seat. So it was um, the, the the bus travel is not fun. Uh, it wasn't fun, uh, no. but the same token, like. The bonds you had with, with you, 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 you got to make really good bonds with teammates in those situations, right? Like there was, there was nothing else but you and and, and your teammates on that bus. So yeah. you you figured some stuff out. You figured out how to how to get along and uh, how to how to how to really get to know each other. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic, and I'm right with you there. I, I was uh, I was in the back of the bus, and you know had had uh, my own two seats and the guy across from me had his own two seats. So <laughs> yeah. One person would be on, on the ground on a mattress and another one would stretch out across. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, craziness. So, um, all right. So you had a great uh, junior career. Um, coaches there, anyone kind of really mentor you and um, that, you know, gave you a shot of adrenaline to, to keep pushing at it, that they, they see something in you that is special? Yeah, no, again, uh, Claude Julien was, uh, was really great for us. So he was, he was our assistant coach my first two years. Um, and then the last year when we won it, he was the head coach. Um, and he was, he was extremely instrumental. Um, taught, taught me a lot about the game, taught me a lot about um, how to carry yourself. Um, you know, he was the first person to tell me, um, you know, Pete, you can make a career out of this. You could be an NHL player and, and really meant it, you know, not yeah. just saying it just, to, to say it. Right. And, and, and he said it and, and gave me tips and ideas on how to do it. Right. So, um, no, again, I, I am so thankful that I got to play for Claude. Um, I'm so thankful that I got, to, again, I got to play for Charlie Henry. Um, who was another person who, who was, who was always, always had my back, always believed in me. Um, and, uh, you know, really helped me find myself, right. Like, um, really find, you know, who I, who I was as a, as a person, um, and, and, and be able to carry that on into the, to the rest of my life and the rest of my career. Okay. Um, that's fantastic uh, that, I don't know, like I said, there's always someone with every player that I've interviewed that, uh, you know, said something, gave him a chance. Uh, 
helped them dust themselves off when they got knocked down a little bit. So you had that uh, great mentorship in juniors. So yeah. you win the Memorial Cup. You're transitioning now to uh, how does signing go? What happened there? And how did you start your pro career? Start from there. Well, actually, uh, my last year junior, I uh, – Went to camp in Florida. So let me backtrack. My first year, my first camp in Florida was a disaster. I, I got sent home as quickly as you possibly could. Um, I didn't understand. Why is that? Well, I didn't understand what a being a professional was. All right. Okay. So, you know, I got drafted. I was super excited about it. You know, I, I went on the, on the celebration tour and I didn't put the work in that I needed to. All right. So I got to camp and I, I wasn't at, at my best. And I, I got sent home right away. I got my hat, my ass handed to me from for my coach for the, for the first month, just putting work in two a days every day. Got back to where I was supposed to be, and then you know had a really good year. And I went home that summer, and I met uh, this guy, uh, Mark Lambert, who uh, became my my strength and conditioning coach. And you know he 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 transformed me. Uh, you know, physically, you know, we put, he, he, he'd show up at my house at seven in the morning. We'd ride the bike. Uh, you know, we go, like we spent like five hours a day in the gym together. Um, he's now currently he's, for the last 10 years, he's, he's been the uh, head strength conditioning coach with the, with the lightning. Which I was is just going to say that I've heard that name before, but I, I couldn't connect the dots. Yeah, no, he was, I was, uh, I was the first guy that he had. Uh, oh, hey. He just walked up to me one day at a restaurant and I was with my friends and he's like, you're a hockey player. I was like, yeah. And he's like, I can make you better. And I was like, okay. And, you know, he told me he was a, uh, he just graduated from McGill. He, he, he had, you know, he'd done his thesis on, on plyometrics and how they apply to, uh, to hockey. Uh, and he said, uh, I'll do it for free. So I was like, let's, let's give it a shot. And uh, yeah, no, he was, he was, he was, uh, Super influential in that aspect. So, you know, I went back to my second camp. I, I, you know, I showed up on day one. I was, you know, a best, best conditioned athlete at, at camp. Um, and I had a really good camp. Um, you know, they were looking for somebody to, to help Paul Laws and they signed a couple guys. Uh, in camp, I, I kind of showed that I should be ahead of them. Um, was making the team and then I broke my hand the last day of camp. <laughs> oh, so, no. yeah. So, uh, I made it, I had signed my contract, uh, during that training camp, um, in Halifax actually we played an exhibition game there, which was pretty cool. Um, and, you know, made it to the opening day roster it was in Philly. Um, you know, I was 19. I was, you know, super pumped. I, you know, I was, I, I thought I'd made an NHL team. Uh, was there for the, about the first week of the season, and they they sent me back to junior. Which, uh, you know, at, at first I was disappointed about, but you know, I got back to again. I love I loved Hall, I loved my teammates there, and I knew that we, we had we had a chance for something special that year. Um, so the next year uh, after we won it, went back to camp. Um, had a good camp again. Um, broke my hand again. <laughs> No. Um, and got sent down to um, New Haven. Um, had a really good year there. Played really well there. Uh, you know, had a good time. I was on a line with um, Ryan Johnson. Uh, that I, I believe he played with. with, with uh, oh, yeah. With, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was on a line with Ryan Johnson and this guy, Dave Nemirovsky, uh, who now coaches in the, in the KHL. Uh, we had we to put up some pretty good numbers there. Um, and then I, I got called up for the last 20 games, uh, in Florida that year and, and, um, kind of never went back. Um, but again, like, you know, we talk about like the mentors and people that, that believed in you. Again, I got into Florida <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I had Brian Murray behind me every day. Um, you know, he, he, he always said I was his, I was his type of guy. Um, uh, he, he just had a lot of faith in me there. And, um, you know, his, his, his nephew, Tim was the one that drafted me. So he, he had a lot of belief in me and, um, 
you know, those first couple of years were, were, were really magical. We had we, the, the guys that were there in Florida at the time were um, some really rock solid guys. They were the guys that were, you know, primarily there from that, for the 96 run. Um, you know, some old veteran guys that, that understood um, how to be a good NHL or how to, how to treat people right, um, treat each other, you know, fairly um, and, and, and try to, and, and kind of push that on me. So like, you know, I think one of the things I've always been proud of outside of the game was that I, I think I've always been a pretty good teammate. I think I've always tried to um, treat guys the right way, you know, like, you know, you could crack wise with them, but I would always, you know, wanted to help them be better, you know, and, and uh, yeah. I know that's something that I've carried on into coaching and into, um, you know, running programs. Um, and a lot of that was the the tone of that was always set by, you know, the Scott Mellonby's of the world and Brian Scrublin's, the Tom Fitz, Fitzgerald's, the, you know, the, the yeah. Dave Lowry's of the world, you know, uh, right, right, yeah. all laws, you know, um, you know, we, had, there was a lot of really good guys there and, uh, you know, very thankful for that. And yeah. then there was the Rob Niedermeyers too. And yeah, screw him. And the Lance Pitlicks. Oh, obviously, <laughs> obviously. I know I'm. Well, There's nothing better than a good roommate that, that serenade, <laughs> serenades you from the bathroom with his guitar every day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So um, you're you're riding a pretty good wave here, uh, winning the Memorial Cup. But once you turned pro, uh, was it pretty much set in stone that you are going to be uh, our heavyweight uh, on this team, and that is going to be your focus, not getting points? Um, yeah. I mean, once I got to the show, I mean, in, in the, in the minors, I still put up, I was still, I still put up numbers and I still had the belief that I was going to be able to turn it into something else. Right. So, you know, you did. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, I think what kind of helped me in my role was that I never thought of myself as that. Right. Like I always, I was always trying to, to be better and in my mind, trying to be better to, I wanted to be Cam Neely, put it that way. Yeah. Right? I wanted to be the guy that could be physical, uh, but who could turn his game around and become, you know, uh, a, a, a top line guy. Um, you know, and, and and you know, obviously there was a lot of work to do that. Um, and I, you know, I was starting to get there, but uh, you know, it just didn't work out. You know, and, and again, I, there's nothing. I don't look back at it with regret. Like I'm, I'm proud of everything that I did and, and how I played. Um, but I, in my mindset, it wasn't just, let me go out there and who am I, who am I fighting next game? Right. My mindset was right. like, how, how can I be, how can I do my job good enough that they're going to play me more minutes? You know, how can I not make mistakes so that they're have to play me more and more? And if I have to fight somebody, I'll fight them. Like that's, you know, I'm, it is what it is, but um, right. I, I was trying to get more minutes, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, and to be honest with you, when I got traded to Colorado, that was supposed to be something that was going to happen. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, I had injuries that, that pre uh, prevented it. Um, but, yeah, that was always my mindset. Like, I'll do, I'll do this and I'll, I'll try to be the best of it. But my goal is to, is to be something more than just – uh, just the fighter. I wanted. I wanted to have that year Chris Simon had, you know, from being the toughest guy in the league to, you know, having a twenty goal season. You know, that yeah. was, that was, um, you know, that was the dream. Um, it, it didn't happen, and that's okay. You know, I, like I said, no regrets about it. But that was that was my mentality. That was my mindset um, when I came to the rank every day. Yeah. Well, I showed, and you, you and I. Uh, our paths crossed in the 1999 season. A little Prince uh, song there for you. Yeah. Um, the big, the so that's when we kind of came together. You, you were the big free agent a, signing. What's that? You were a big free agent signing that summer. Well, I, I, <laughs> big free agent signing. I mean, you know, I, I get one goal a year. And <laughs> uh, I look at I got that picture on the wall. Remember that picture that we took where – Pavel Bury is in the middle of you and I, and I think I, I, Paul Laws. I have um, that on my wall. I look at it every day too, but 
And I'm like, why am I in that picture? Like, <laughs> I, like I didn't fight hardly at all. Uh, so, anyways, I got it on my wall too, and I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so look it up every day. we had uh, that 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 year. Um, you know, when I first got down there, that was a pretty doggone fun year up yep. until the the All Star break. Um, <laughs> But I mean, we we would go to movies. I mean, we were such a close knit team. And you know, for you, you that was probably the the year that you um, a breakout year for you. I would think. Yeah. Anyways. Um, no, I'd say the year before probably as was, but uh, I know that you know from a an organization standpoint that they put together a pretty doggone good team. Yeah. Uh, because we, we were one of the top teams by that all-star break, weren't we? Yeah, no, we were. No, it was a good year. And, no, you're absolutely right. It was, it, that was probably the year that I fully solidified myself as, as an NHL player, like that I was, you know, I was a guy that whose name was always going to be on the, on the score sheet. I was always going to be in the lineup. Um, wasn't something that, that I had to worry about. Um, and, and yeah, no, look, we had, we had, we had a, we had a chance. It didn't work out. Um, but I mean, again, like a, a lot of that was get the puck to Pav and let him, yeah. let him, let him do what he did. Right. And, and just try to make room and create space for him and, and, and things of that nature. Obviously, um, you know, we had, we had the wizard playing that for us back then and, and, and Causey and, um, you know, we were we were we were a good team in that in 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 the way the game was played back then, right? We had, you know, we had a really good scoring first line. We had we had two two good shutdown lines, um, and we were solid on the back end. You know, we didn't have uh, maybe the that dy- super dynamic defenseman, even though, um, you know, you could like make the case. You, yeah, no, you could make the case for that, but I mean, he was still young at that point. I, I don't think he, he really blossomed into that until until he went to Vancouver, um, you know. And you know, but again, I think we we had a shot. It just it just didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably don't remember, but one of the first things on my to do list when the season started was to take you uh, out to lunch and Paul. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the toughest guys and buy you buy you lunch or dinner and i did that I, I can't remember where but i know that i did it uh yeah. because i always had a really good relationship with uh our fighters on our team because mm-hmm. um you know being a, a sixth defenseman you know I, there'll be times where you're sitting on the bench and same with you if you're not on the top two lines and killing penalties or playing on the power play you're sitting a lot yeah and i remember one game game you said pitter nothing's going on i'm out next and i was out next and he says just try to run someone over and get out of the way i'll be right yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I said a lot of stupid stuff <laughs> no but um, did you did you have that type of relationship with some players on your team when things weren't going well for you personally or you had to kind of change the momentum in a game well, yeah, I mean, I think I, I had a lot of different types of relationships. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, like Paul was a big brother to me. So, like, I, you know, I you know, I followed his his words uh, in hockey uh, to the T. Um, but in terms of, like, you know, change in momentum of the game, yeah, I mean, there's always – you always knew guys on your bench that could do that. And you always sometimes – like, to me, in my mind, I always sit there and be like, Coach, get them on the ice. The game's not going right. <laughs> let's 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 try to change it up, you know. And uh, you know whether it was guys like you, whether it was somebody like um, Serge Paye when he came in, you know, guys who brought, brought some energy. Uh, you know, I could go down the list of guys that we had up and down, but um, you know, the guys on the bottom half, we we kind of always kind of had to stick together, right? <laughs> like we were, we always had to kind of support each other. Um, you know, and, and pull for each other. Because uh, at the end of the day, like, again, I think in certain cases, had they played us more, we could have had a lot more success, not only individually, but I do think as, as a team success, right? So, yeah. but I mean, again, the, the game was different. The way that it was coached was different. Um, 
you know, we had, there was a lot more specialists back then. Whereas, you know, today they, they want everybody to contribute, you know, and, and I think that's what helps the, the pace of the game be so much quicker now. Everybody's got to go, you know, and, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, you know, you can look at, you can look back at it win, uh, wistfully sometimes, but, um, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, um, you know, you, you always said the earlier, you said that, you know, your, your objective was to be a good teammate and, um, I just remember, I mean, you were, I believe a seventh round draft pick. I was a ninth round draft pick. I remember you and I were always out, uh, on the ice. One of the last guys to come out, come off mm-hmm. the ice. Cause we'd be, you know, trying to work on our skill just to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah, you're on the ice with Pavel Burry. Uh, there, there's a spotlight that's put on a few players. Is that this is how far below <laughs> this superstar they are? <laughs> Certainly. Oh, it's. Uh, it, I, I would always say like the Florida days were, were were good that way, but like I got to Colorado, it was it was even amplified, right? So, um, you know, playing with the group of guys that we had there that year. You know, it was all led by by Joe Sackick, right? So, if we had eleven o'clock practice, Joe was on the ice at ten thirty every day, every practice, just working on that shot, right? Just working on that shot, that quick release, that that coming off the wing, and you know the way that he scored so many of his goals. So yeah. if 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 Joe was on at ten thirty, you know, Solani's and and Korea's were on it at ten twenty, you know, the Foots and Blakey's were on at ten fifteen. And then the slugs like myself and Danny Heino were on at like 9.30, right? Like, yeah. you just, just to, like you said, just to try to keep up, just to try to show that, 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 that you, that you, that you belong. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't a, you better be out there type of thing. It was just kind of like that, that just psychological peer pressure, right? Like if, if, if our leaders are out here, we have to be out here and showing more, um, you know, and, and then, you know, when practice ended at 12, we, you know, we stayed out and did extra, you know, so the, the days that you worked in Colorado were, were even more so, right? And then yeah. that's why that team was so successful. Um, but yeah, like every day you're out there just grinding it, you know, chopping it up, you know, cutting that puck in a thousand pieces, trying to stick handle, whatever the case may be. But um, you're always, always trying to do something different, you know, like I was trying, trying to, to stay there. I was trying to stay there. I was. That's all I, I was doing. Well, I think that, well, that's what most of us do. And but again, I, you always to stay there. You got to try to add to your game, right? So like, you know, I, I never took a face off in the NHL, but every practice I was working on to try to be the best face off guy in the league. Sure. You know, and then you know, my last year when I could barely walk and I was playing in, in the in the minors, I led the league in, in face off percentage. <laughs> like, was, <laughs> you know, how cool was, is that? Yeah, you know. So it's it's. Um, it, it's all the little things that, that, that go into it that uh, that that people don't see, you know, and they, they just think that a lot of guys, and especially the higher-end guys, you know, are just super, super talented. But, like, the guys on the bottom are, are really talented too, but they just have to work so much harder because they always want to replace you. They, they, they can replace you for somebody cheaper. They're going to yeah. do that, right? So we, we always, yeah, always have to stay a step ahead uh, in that regard. And and show your worth uh, every day. You can't take a day off. You could have, you could take a day off if you're, like you said, if you're on that first line, you're on the power play, you're on the PK. You can have a bad practice. You can have a bad week. We have we have a bad week. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> Good luck in your future endeavors. <laughs> yeah. you, get the, you get the Vince McMahon coming in. You're fired. You know. Like, yeah. Oh. World. It's so true, yeah. Well, there are different levels, but uh, whatever the you know required amount of skill is needed to play at that level, we had it uh, just enough to get in the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, and carved out a pretty pretty good career. I you had three hundred ninety one games. I had three hundred ninety three games. So um, oh. very similar careers, minus the penalty minutes. I mean, you probably have about two thousand more penalty minutes than me. I so, quite a bit. I <laughs> <ain't> quite a <laughs> bit. Yeah. So well, here, Pete, we talked be you know before we uh, hit the record button, um, and I bring this up because it's important. Uh, and I, I, 
I, uh, just about you being a, a black man playing in a primarily uh, white dominant sport. Uh, I had a player that I uh, have trained for a number of years. Um, I would say it was in the last maybe eight months that uh, there was something going on race related um, in the news. And I, I just asked him about, you know, <coughs> have you experienced any of that, you know, as a kid? And he's, he's probably 13 years old, 14. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. And I, I said a lot. And he said, you know, more than once. And I asked him, you know, can you tell me, you know, where it happened? Was it in school? And he said, no, all of them were in the hockey locker room. Uh, yeah. So how, how was your experience growing up uh, with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think all of us have dealt with, with different situations. Um, I would say for the most part in the locker rooms, especially growing up, wasn't, wasn't anything egregious. Uh, I think, again, I was fortunate. Um, most of my career growing up, I played with Jason Doig. Uh, you know, it was another, you know, another black kid. Um, we were two of the better players. We were two of the biggest players. <laughs> so, you know, we had a little bit of that to help us out with, but I think, there, again, I think in that aspect, it was just a lot of things that were said that were just, I don't think the narrative were, 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 were trying to be mean, mean spirited. It, it was just uh, culturally insensitive, you know, saying yeah. things, you know, um, that, you know, we had a, we had a grin and bear, it, but we're, we're like, it would be frustrating to say the least. I but, remember Pete, I remember Pete being with you and mm -hmm. experiencing that with you and saying that's that's effed up you know I, I can't believe that you know you just said that but i didn't i didn't step up and shame on me yeah but again i and i, I appreciate that i really do um and again i i i think in in, in the 99 of those times i think it was that people didn't understand that there, that we are, we do have cultural differences. It's, it's not that it's it's a bad thing. It's something that we should celebrate. Um, but hockey is is a homogenized sport, right? And it, it it's it's created a mindset that everybody has to be exactly the same. And one one of the things I've always respected about you, Lance, is that you know you you always kind of played your own beat, right? Like you were you you were. You weren't you weren't homogenized like everybody else. Like you 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 had different opinions. You did different things, and I think that's wonderful. And I and I, I and I wish there was more of that. I wish that more people were like that back in the day. Um, Thank you. But 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 I I would say that my locker room experience overall was was actually pretty good. I think most people got along with me. Um, mm -hmm. But but I would say that I, you know I there was probably times that I. I <clears throat> I went along with things that I, that, that uh, I, I, I probably wouldn't do now or that I, that I have a lot of respect for the kids of today that won't put up with it, you know, and, and talking to some of the younger guys uh, who play today, like I'm so proud of, of the stances that they're taking and, 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 and trying to stand up for, 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 for kids of color everywhere. So that, yeah. that the, the locker room experiences are better, but more importantly, just the, the overall experience right so as as again my, my locker rooms experiences for the most part were 99 percent uh positive but i can't say that about when i played the games yeah. right so um whether it was comments said by players on other teams um that were either outright racist or um totaling that line um or just playing in places and hearing what supposed fans of the game were saying. Um, you know, people that have not put a moment of the dedication that that, that I have put into this game, um, you know, saying things that just were beyond the pale. Um, didn't happen as much in the NHL, though it happened. Um, but like in junior, it was rampant. In, in, in youth hockey, it was rampant. Um, and in that time, again, it was a lot of just put your head down, just keep doing what you're doing. 
which is important and it was very important and 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 it was good advice um but i do i do think it was a missed opportunity for for the players of my generation whether it's myself kevin weeks george larac uh jean-luc grandpierre uh, don brashear we i think we all could have done a better job of standing up for it then um and be more um not aggressive with it, but just 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 taking a bigger stance against it. Um, yeah, absolutely, and we wouldn't have put as much weight on on the declares of the world today of the uh, of, of you know the Nassim Kadri's of the world. Um, you know, I think they they all were able to look at us and be able to say that hey, those guys played, so we can do it too. That that's that's a positive. Yeah, but and I think we could have you know just been a little bit more vocal. Uh, at that time, but again, a, a lot of us were at that time were just just trying to just trying to stay. And again, yeah. it was a different cultural uh, moment in, in the world where you know if we I think if we stood up, everybody would say, "Oh, you're you're being distraction. You're being uh, you're you're biting the gift horse in the mouth, in the hand, or uh, you're playing the race card." All the, all all the different things to try to quiet you down. Um, yeah. You know, so you know not ashamed of, of my time, but again, I think we, we could have done a better job in, in just defining um, what was, what, what is acceptable and what isn't. But uh, like the, again, the players of today, I think are doing a much better job of that. Uh, I think not only just in, in terms of the race, but just in terms of, again, just being their authentic selves and, and uh, being more welcoming to people of, of all, all, all creeds of all, uh, religions of all sexual experiences. It, it, I think we're, the kids today are, are are so much better than us in, in, in those aspects. And they're better hockey players too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just point that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're a lot more skilled than we were. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, great messaging. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's super important uh, to continue to, to have the conversations. Uh, until we don't have to have the conversations anymore. Um, so uh, thanks again. And congratulations on a, a wonderful career. I mean, it to become an everyday player in the NHL is not easy for uh, a couple schlep rocks like you and I. <laughs> but somehow we uh, figured out a way to, to not go away. And I just want to say congratulations on a, a great career and it was a pleasure uh being on the ice with you and working in practices and being roommates on the road we had a lot of conversations um and i just i don't remember every one of them but i remember that uh i i think fondly of you and i was grateful that you were uh my roommate and we were on the same team together uh oh, that, that that means a lot um Again, I, I, I am so proud of the, the, the career that I had and, 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 and really the relationships that, that I had, you know, and, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of success on the ice overall in my career, uh, in, in the NHL, which was, you know, obviously frustrating, but, uh, I, I met so many wonderful, good people, right. And, and, and you were clearly one of them. Um, our time together was, was really special. We had the, we had the Minnesota four that I looked at in my eyes, right. You and you and Parrish and, uh, uh, Brett Hattie 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 and, and, uh, Maddie Cullen when he came over for a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, guys were, were all such great guys and, uh, wonderful people and wonderful men. And, and even though, you know, I was young and immature at the time. Like uh, there was a lot, so much I learned from you guys that uh, as I grew up and as I matured, uh, I, t I took in, you know, and, and uh, whether it was through osmosis or through our conversations, right? So uh, I'm, I'm thankful very much for our time together. Uh, I'm very, I was very excited that you got, you got in touch with me and I was very excited about us having this chance to, 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 to reconnect. Um, you know, so proud of, of, of uh, the things that you've done. I'm so proud of, uh, you know, how far your kids have come. And, and 
you know, you know, being an NHL or being a college player, like that, those are such great um, achievements. And, and uh, you know, I know that you probably, you played a big part in that. And uh, I'm sure more so than being a good hockey player is a good young man. Yeah, absolutely. So awesome. All right. Uh, not to cut you off there on that sentimental thing, but thank you for everything <laughs> that you just said right there. Um, give us a couple minutes because we're over an hour now, and uh, I know that that's going to cap us here. But kind of, uh, what do you got going on now? What's uh, what's important? What's your mission? Uh, what how you feeding your passion? Um, so I'm, uh, youth hockey has been where I've spent most of my time since I retired. Uh, I've coached. Uh, I guess almost 15, 17 years now. So, um, you know, did everything from, from 8U all the way up to college, did a couple of years of pro. Um, but where I'm at right now, I, I, I was running the, 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 the Florida Panthers youth program for about the last four years, um, taking a little uh, step aside and trying to do some new things, right? Like we're, we're building a new facility down in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so my, my job and my, my goal right now is to try to bring in a, a new customer base, try to bring in, um, you know, players uh, and, and families uh, that maybe haven't been in the hockey before, who haven't been exposed to hockey before um, and, and try to and try to create programming for them uh, where they feel special, whether it's you know, uh, special needs players, uh, whether it's girls programming, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, the Latin community, the, the black community down here in South Florida, um, but really try to, you know, dig in and and really, you know, not just say hockey is for everybody, but uh, actually make it for everybody. Absolutely. Well, I'm super happy that you're still involved in the game uh, because you know, the one thing we can we, we can hold on to our experiences that we had have as a player, but once you get into coaching and training players and stuff like that, you're you're at the beginning and it takes you it takes you a number of years before you kind of figure out who you are as a coach. And I'm sure that uh you had the same experience, but yeah. um, you know, I just I haven't heard a bad thing about you, Pete. Every person that uh when I talk to that is a so connected with you. Uh, they just speak so highly uh, of you and how happy and grateful they are that you're you're uh, still helping players uh, try to achieve their hockey goals. Well, that's, that's nice. That's certainly nice to hear. Um, you know, one thing about hockey that's always been great. It's, it's a you know, it's a it's a sport where uh, you know you give back. You know, and and and. Uh, you, you try to you try to be a bridge to the next generation, and, and uh, I I, I kind of want to do come with it the same gusto as a as a coach or development side as a, as I did as a player, and to try to be the, you know as a positive experience to players as as the people that did it for me, right? So um, we've been I've been very lucky down here in South Florida and and and, and working with some players that have. Uh, gone on and, and, and have become good hockey players. Um, but I'm also as much proud of, of the players that I've had that, uh, you know, stopped playing hockey at 18, but moved on to be, you know, policemen and firemen and, and doctors and lawyers and, and have been, um, you know, just good people in, in, in the community. Um, awesome. You know, and that's, that's, uh, I think that's in this in this role. That's what that's what the goal is. How do we make good people? Awesome. Um, all I can say, Pete, is that if if I need an excuse to get out of here, not in the summer, no in the spring, but during <laughs> no. the winter, I'm gonna tap you on the shoulder, give you a ring, and say, "Hey, you want to hang out for a little bit down there?" So, Absolutely, Pete. First, I want to say thank you for taking the time and being on the Hockey Journey podcast. Uh, second, I want to congratulate you on a, just a great career. I mean, you did it. A seventh-round pick, made it to the NHL, played in 391 games, and earned every one of them. <laughs> and lastly, uh, thank you for still being in the game and passing on your knowledge and experiences to, to the next uh, generation of hockey hopefuls. and 
uh, I listened to a, a couple of podcasts that you were on in the past, and uh, I, I train more girls now than I do boys now that my <laughs> kids are out of youth hockey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know that that's been a, a, an area of focus for you is to, to really continue to help grow the, the girls' side of the sport. Yeah, it's important. I mean, it's, it's, it's 50% of the, of the population, right? Like yeah. um, the fact that we, we haven't – uh, made that a focus, you know, for so long. I think it's it's been, you know, it's, it's been a problem. Um, and you know, just watching, you know, these girls put the uh, the effort they put in. Um, you know, it's it's exciting to see them move on. It's exciting to see them play college, and uh, it's going to be really exciting when when they when the professional leagues um, are in, in in such a way that these these women can be true pros. Because they deserve it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, if there's anything, Pete, that I can do to help you and whatever you got going on, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks again for being on the show, and until our paths cross again. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and, and good luck with everything, Lance. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed meeting Peter Orrell and hearing his hockey journey. I say it over and over and over again. Everyone's hockey journey is different, but when the dust settles and you look back at what actually happened during a player's entire hockey career, they're all the same. Careers filled with the ugly, the challenges, and the greatest feelings and experiences ever. Lastly, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon. And do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.